On your way to the library, too, eh? Good. <laughs> I'm meeting my grandson, Barney, there. Real studious boy, Barney. <clears throat> Takes after me. Uh, well, there's the library. Shall we drop in? <laughs> Hi, Grandpa. Lucky guess. Hmm, The Odyssey, by Homer. Glad you're reading one of the great literary classics, Barney. Exciting, isn't it? Uh-huh. Understatement, the mark of intelligence. I do the same thing myself. As you've probably noticed by now, because you've seen that I don't talk all that much, but when I do have something to say, I don't beat around the bush, but get right to the point. So, Barney, that Ulysses was a real adventurer. Who? Who? What do you mean, who? Ulysses, the hero of the Odyssey. The hero of the what? The Odyssey. This book. What's this? A comic book? Superheroes from outer space. <laughs> He's not only smart, but he loves to play jokes on his old grandpa. Lose the comic book. Dump it. <clears throat> yes, sir. Brains and a sense of humor. That's my Barney. Put it away. Put it away. But, Grandpa, I'm just getting to the exciting part. Then you should be reading the Odyssey. The whole book is exciting. But it's such an old book. Almost 3,000 years, to be exact. Then it couldn't be more exciting than superheroes from outer space. Well, it is. Here, look. Ulysses became the king of Ithaca. That was part of Greece. By winning the king's axe contest, he shot an arrow so straight and true that he split it on the blade of an axe. Wow! I'll bet he would have been great with a laser gun. Then he had to lead his soldiers off to the Trojan War, leaving his young wife Penelope, and if that wasn't bad enough, their baby son Telemachus. Antinous, an evil man who was jealous of Ulysses, thought this might work out nicely for him. That Antinous looks like a real bad dude. He was. He hoped Ulysses would get killed in the war so he could have a shot at being king and marrying the beautiful queen Penelope. <laughs> get it? A shot at being king? Splitting an arrow on an axe? Did Ulysses get killed? No, but after 10 years of fighting, the Greeks still couldn't get inside the walls of Troy. And Ulysses desperately wanted to get home to see his wife and now 10-year-old son. So, what did he do? Give up? A hero like Ulysses? Of course not. He used his head. Ouch! <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, Ulysses came up with an ingenious plan. A horse? Not just any horse. A huge, hollow, wooden horse filled with Greek warriors, including Ulysses. And the Trojans brought it into the town? Right by thunder. That's why it's called the Trojan Horse. <laughs> In the middle of the night, Ulysses and the other warriors sneaked out, and that's when it happened. What? What happened? The Greeks won. It was all over. Gee, Grandpa, why'd you have to go and tell me the ending? It was sounding so good, I was gonna read it. Why, that's just the beginning, Barney, when the real excitement started. Yeah? Like what? <laughs> Let's really get into the story and find out. Come on! Wow! All right! Here we go! You're crazy! Don't go yet! There's a storm coming! Not now! It's too dangerous! I don't care about a storm. I care about getting home to my family. How about you, men? Let's go home! Let's leave now! Forget the storm! Cast off! Hooray! Yeah! Hooray! Those clouds are building pretty fast, Ulysses. Let them build, Eurylochus. A little breeze and a few raindrops aren't going to keep me from my wife and son. Of course. 
course, it might throw us off course a little. But everyone else has returned from Troy, and they agree that no ship could have survived that storm. Ulysses must be dead. No, my father can't be dead. I'll never believe that. Too bad, kid. Of course he's dead. Nor will I, Telemachus. Regardless, I, along with these other fine citizens, present you with this tapestry, so that Ulysses' picture may join those of Ithaca's other dead kings. I know you and these other fine citizens will be disappointed, but I can't accept it. Oh, can you believe it? But the tapestry must be hung before we can hold the archery contest to select a new king. My father is king. He's alive. That's true. Why hasn't he returned? Where is he? So, Eurylochus, what have you found? Come, take a look. The storm that blew us off course must have also contained some winds of good fortune. So it would seem, Eurylochus. So it would seem. Meat, potatoes, vegetables, everything we need is here. <clears throat> it was your expert seamanship that brought us through the storm, but this, this is like a miracle. I wonder who lives here. I don't know. But judging by the size of that cauldron, and the bed, there must be a lot of them. Or one big one. <laughs> Make that one big angry one. <laughs> Greetings, friend. I'm Ulysses, King of Ithaca. This is Eurylochus, my loyal aide. And these men are... Mine. You are mine. We'll have to forget the food, fellas. I'll draw his attention away from the entrance. When I do, make a dash for it. <sighs> now I eat it. <laughs> More food. <laughs> Keep me happy and you live for a while. I'll distract him while you get the rest of it set up. Why not just blind him? One of those sharpened poles right in that big, ugly eye. Never fight when there's a better way. That way we'll live to see our families again. <laughs> faster, faster! Uh, excuse me, your grossness. It's time for your shave. <laughs> My what? Your shave. It'll relax you after a busy day of cyclopsing. I just shaved three days ago, <laughs> but okay. All right, men, soak that towel. Yes, sir. A shave, a hot towel, you'll feel like a new Cyclops. Hmm, your razor's a bit dull, but this should do the trick. Watch it. My skin tender like baby. Oh, I'll be very careful, your ugliness. <laughs> I like you. You show respect. <laughs> I eat you last. Uh, but your callousness, we've made you happy. Why not just let us go? <laughs> Why? You not get far anyway. <laughs> but how can you be so sure? You might not believe, but are some pretty weird things in this world. Oh, really? Like what? Like siren song. Song? You mean music? <laughs> it drives sailors crazy, sails ships onto rocks. But why? Who knows? All dead. All right, fellas. Time for the hot towel. Yeah! Careful now. Tender skin. Easy does it. Ooh. <laughs> A little higher. <laughs> Why cover I? Well, so that later I can uh, pluck your eyebrow, of course. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All set, Eurylochus? Yes. I just wish this were more of a sure thing. Hey, it's better than a sharp stick in the eye. Go! <laughs> 
Wait, oh, go! Quiet, your ugliness resting. Wait, right. It's dark. Get him! Hurry! His tunic will make a great sail. Look out, he's getting up. Watch it. Get his tunic now. Go! Get ready. Here it comes. sail to the ship. The rest of you grab all you can carry. Now move! <laughs> I kill you! I squash you! Where are you? I'm over here! But you'll never get me because you're too dumb to know how! <laughs> and I'm certainly not going to tell you that I'm up on this ledge right in front of you! Or that the only way to get me is to ram me with that cauldron. No, sir. I'm not going to tell you any of that. <laughs> oh, boy. You're really dumb. Ow! <laughs> that take care of him. All right, men. Let's go! Huh? What? I miss. Wait, I try again. He's not coming back. Are we the new king? No, go away. You can't come in. Never mind, Telemachus. They're in whether we want them or not. But it's all right. Please go play now. Hmm. Our patience is at an end, Penelope. Everyone except you and that brat agrees that Ulysses is dead. I shouldn't wonder. You've been working very hard to convince them. And they've all signed this petition to hang the tapestry ourselves, if you still refuse, and then hold the contest. You needn't do that. I will hang Ulysses' tapestry. Excellent. What? Well, uh, uh, good. Then let's... But not the one you have. It's cheap and ugly. Totally unsatisfactory. I'll have another one made. Don't bother. The only one I'll find acceptable is the one I'm weaving myself. I'll hang it as soon as it's finished. And when will that be? You'll have to be patient. Perfection takes time. Yes, of course. We shouldn't be keeping you. Everybody out! Quit bothering her! Go, go! <laughs> Uh, how could you do it, Mother? How could you? Telemachus! Oh, Ulysses, where are you? The men have their instructions. On your order, we'll plug our ears with wax and lash you to the mast. Good. With me tied up, it'll be up to you to keep us off the rocks, Eurylochus. Why don't you just plug your ears like the rest of us? So we'll know when we're out of danger from the siren song. Eurylochus, listen! No, don't listen! Plug your ears and steer us as close to shore as you safely can. Plug your ears! Quickly, bind me to the mast! Soon I will know. I will know the secret of the siren song. But what was the secret of the siren song, Grandpa? Well, Barney, what everyone heard were the voices they most wanted to hear. But it also made them lose their judgment. So? I still don't get it. Well, Ulysses wanted to hear the voices of Penelope and Telemachus, whom he missed so much. And he did. Ulysses! Ulysses! Penelope! to 
me, Father. Telemachus? Is that you, Telemachus? I'm here, waiting for you on the rock. Oh, now I get it. He would have sailed right into the rocks like those other ships did, because he was cuckoo for a while. Ahem. <clears throat> I think that confused is a better description than cuckoo, Barney. Whatever. It was just a darn good thing that Eurylochus couldn't hear the silent song. Now that's where the real tricky part came in. A bump on the head knocked one of Eurylochus's earplugs out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh is right. He thought he heard his mother begging him to rescue her from the rocks. He headed right for them. That wasn't the end of them, was it? Well, it sure looked like it. But fortunately, Ulysses was a very strong man. And not just physically, but mentally and emotionally as well. Through sheer strength of will, he was able to get his wits about him and signal Eurylochus to cover his ear with his hand. They missed the rocks! Just barely. And there was worse to come. Much worse. What could be better, Ulysses? The weather's fair, the water's calm, and the breeze is strong. And soon we'll be home to our families. Telemachus is ten years old by now. I'm sure he's grown into a fine boy. If only I could have been there to see it happen. Never again will I... Whirlpool! Whirlpool to no starboard problem. bow! No problem! Port to port! We'll stay close to the cliff. Look what's coming! I saw it first! No, you didn't! Move your head! I can't see! Move over! Hold still! I want that one! Come here! Mmm! You look good! No! He's mine! Out of the way! I'm not in the way! You are! I'll issue the weapons! There's no time! I have an idea. Hold! Who are you and just what do you think you're doing? Huh? I am Scylla, and I'm here to eat my fill of your crew. If they'll quit running all over the place. All right. I'll make a deal with you. Let everyone else go and you can have me without a chase. No! He's only one, but he's a sure thing. He doesn't mean it. I assure you, I'm very willing. We're all on our way home to die anyway. We've been poisoned. Poisoned? Yes, I'm willing to sacrifice myself now so my crew can see their families one last time. I'm going to die anyway. You and I may as well die together. Do what together? Die, of course. As soon as you devour me, or any of us for that matter, you'll be poisoned too. I believe him. No, it's a trick. But what if it isn't? I think he's bluffing. Now, look, can we get on with this? Huh? My crew would like to get home uh, before they drop dead. Huh? How do we know you're not lying about being poisoned? Easy. Take a bite. No! Get away! Leave me alone! Yuck! Go away! No! 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 Leave me alone! Don't touch me! No! No! <laughs> Movable on the side toward the center of the whirlpool. You cannot escape. I, Charybdis, am far more powerful than you, puny mortals. But not half as smart. That's why I can use your power to escape you. You <laughs> escape me. Push it all overboard! But why did he push everything overboard, Grandpa? Because it suddenly made the ship lighter, and the spinning force just threw it right out. Ah! Uh, Ulysses! <laughs> Ulysses! 
Ulysses! We've lost the rudder! We can't steer! The sun is set, madam. So it has. It's time for us to get busy. What's going on out there? Telemachus, what on earth are you doing? Practicing to become as good an archer as my father. You're still only 10 years old. You have plenty of time for that. Do I, mother? Now that you're weaving the tapestry, the only way to prevent Antinous from replacing my father as king is to beat him in the contest. Oh, my poor Telemachus. Come, let me show you something. So that's it. During the day, you weave on the tapestry, and at night, you undo what you've done. It'll never be finished. Which means it'll never be hung, which means no king's axe contest, which means no new king. You see, I will always love your father and you. I'm sorry I ever doubted you, mother. It's all right, son. You were just frightened, that's all. I still am. Sooner or later, Antinous is going to catch on. I'd better keep practicing. Very well. But surely, your father will be home by then. <laughs> My goodness. Aren't we jumpy, though? Who are you? And where am I? I'm Calypso. You were very fortunate. You're the only one who's ever made it through the portal. It's the only way on or off my island. Then, how did you get here? I've always been here, alone. Except for Etos. Now that you're here, I'll no longer be lonesome. Calypso enjoyed having Ulysses there because she'd been lonesome for a long time. In fact, she liked it so much, she and Etos wouldn't let him even try to leave. But Ulysses was bound and determined to get home to Penelope and Telemachus, no matter what. So, fooling Calypso and Etos into thinking he was making a birdbath for the pet eagle, he chiseled a boat out of a boulder. It took him ten years, but he did it. The next trick was to make it through the portal, alive. Another perfect shot. That's nine out of ten, Telemachus. But Antinous hits ten out of ten. I've watched him practice. Ah, so what? If there ever is a contest, it's a long way off. <laughs> Your mother's no closer to finishing the tapestry than she was ten years ago. I know, Eurylochus. But over the last few years, Antinous has grown increasingly impatient and suspicious. If he ever... Even if I hadn't caught you red-handed, I was close to figuring it out. I'm not easily fooled, you know. Obviously. I mean, it only took you ten years. Stop! Get away! <gasps> out! Get out and stay out! Oh, we'll get out. But I'm afraid I won't be staying out. You see, we've hung our own Ulysses tapestry. So day after tomorrow, I'll be moving in permanently. Well, you're moving out permanently. Right after I win the King's Axe Contest. <gasps> mm -hmm. Give this coin to the judge and tell him to make sure he lets me choose when he flips it to see who goes first. Hmm. But this coin has two heads. That's why I want to choose first. I'll pick heads, I'll get to shoot first, and I'll be king. Because the rules say, the first one to split their arrow wins. Tell the judge this is a down payment. There'll be more once I become king, and get my hands on Ulysses' fortune. Penelope, if I can make it through here, I will soon be home with you and Telemachus. If I don't make it, I can only hope you both know how much I love you. I 
Now, if you'll all quiet down and listen closely, I'll explain the purpose of this contest. They know the purpose, that's why they're here. Get on with it. Uh, yes, of course. Um, well now, whoever is the first to split his arrow will become our new king. The flip of a coin determines who gets to shoot first. Uh, the judge will now select the contestant who will make the call. <coughs> In honor of our late beloved King Ulysses, his son Telemachus will make the call. <coughs> Come on, Judge. We're all waiting. Heads. Heads it is. Uh, I mean... Heads it is. You can do it! Don't let it bother you that your mother's future and your own are riding on this one shot. Don't think about how awful it would be if you missed now. Mm. Go. Mm. Mm. Do it. Split the arrow, boy! Split it! Split it! Don't worry, Telemachus. We will survive. Yes, my dear Penelope, you will. But he won't. With no home and no money, I'm going to have it all! <laughs> we, we thought we'd never see you again. If it weren't for an uncrushable bolt made from a boulder, you wouldn't have. Hmm. I will not be denied! <laughs> Welcome home, Father. Telemachus. My son. So, Antinous went to prison, and Ulysses, Penelope, and Telemachus lived out the rest of their lives in peace and happiness. Well, it's about time to get back to the library. What a neat story! Gee, Grandpa, back then they had real heroes. Daddy! 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 Daddy, 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 Daddy. Whoa! <laughs> Hi, kids. Hi, honey. I missed you. They aren't the only heroes, Barney. <laughs> they aren't the only heroes. Thank you.